Hey, summer's almost over here, so we couldn't get through the summer without saluting one of our favorite gadgets in uh, the world of barbecue. Plus, a sweet secret ingredient that's a nice way to finish off the summer. Fire it up. <laughs> <laughs> From the birthplace of American barbecue, this is orange. You got uh, orange, I got Moretti, I'm Italian today. We're in the low country of South Carolina. It's great TV. I'm Bill West with barbecuetricks.com. Oh, that's like music. And uh, this is Jack Waybor, three-time South Carolina state champion. What, the popping of the beer? Popping of the beer, no, the, the uh, barbecuetricks.com. Barbecue like, wow. It's like music. Music to your ears, cheers to you. Cheers to you. This is, uh, or have you had this? I have not. It does smell orangey. Is it orangey? I'm drinking Moretti. I believe Moretti is an Italian beer. It's uh, it's got B I R A Bira Moretti. So, oh, it's from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, which means it's not Italian. It's made right here in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Is it really? It says so right there on the label. Check it out. I swear. How come these people haven't been on the show yet? We got to get them on the show, Bill. Really? Total Beverage Solution, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. That may be that it's Italian you know that? beer imported to Mount by Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. But what Did the heck? They? got to put these sunglasses back on because when they set us up in the show, they put us in the best light possible, which means I'm looking straight in the sun. And this is brewed by Coronado, California Sweet. Brewing Company. Uh, we uh, have a show that's a beer in length, so we like to get right to it and talk about uh, what you want to talk about. Sometimes you send us some uh, letters at greattv.com, either yeah, Jack good. at greattv.com or Bill at greattv.com. And, and here's one that we just got. Hey, guys, just found your site. Looks pretty interesting. Sweet. I'm going to be a regular. Oh. Harry Lawrence, one of the founding members of BarbecueBrethren.com, writes, Barbecue Brethren. I've been smoking for quite some time. I bought a new smoker some years ago and got hooked up with the internet with a few guys. We started a website. The rest is history. Anyway, my old Bandera, that's how they got started, Bandera. has seen its last days. Is that a kind of grill? Yeah, Bandera is a grill. And I'm looking for a new cooker. I've been looking around. I've checked with clothes, spice wine. And by the time he pays shipping, they said they're all out of reach. It's crazy you can't find a homegrown cooker in South Carolina. Everybody seems to want the UDS, the yep. Ugly Drum Smoker. We've yep, talked yep. about those. We have. Uh, that he, but he wants something different. He says he found a, found a company in Piedmont, South Carolina, called Carolina Grills. Yep. Do you know anything about them? I do. And uh, just looking for a little help. It's Harry Lawrence, a.k.a. Cabo. Harry, it's good to hear, your vo uh, good to hear from you. Um, certainly... Um uh, the Barbecue Brethren is a huge barbecue site, and there are there's 22,500 doesn't surprise me. It's a big site. Um, a lot of people get around the Barbecue Brethren. It moves fast over there. So if you do happen to get on the Brethren, make sure you're prepared to they, move what, fast. It's a chat it's, board. Oh, wow. Okay. More, it's, it's, it's a message board kind of chat board, kind of like uh, Barbecue Talk used to be. Remember, I don't know if you I were just, on that at all. I know you, you frequent those. I just I cannot. I have a hard time reading those kinds right. of message boards, and the threads get... It, it, it takes time to go through and, uh, you know, sift through the information and, and get out of it what you need. And, uh, I like fortunately, pictures. Fortunately, yeah, great place. It's, it's always wonderful. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, I do know of Carolina Grills. Uh, I have cooked on a, a cooker. I believe the fellow who owns Piedmont Grills is called, his name is Mike Lau. Uh, Carolina Grills, I'm sorry, at, at Piedmont. Uh, I have friends that have uh, Carolina Grills, and certainly it is a quality cooker. Um, our friend uh, uh, Russ Cornett has cooked on one before uh, and looked at closely at having one. I believe they have one at the fire station in Somerville has one. Um, and uh, Doug Quinn has one as well. Uh, they, are, they are a fine cooker, uh, offset uh, gas mix usually. Uh, that's the way I've seen them. Um, and, and a good cooker. But if I was going to buy a cooker tomorrow and I needed a local South Carolina cooker, I would call my friend, and will always be a good friend of mine, John Haney at Alvaron Cookers. John probably makes, in my opinion, the best grill for the investment that you could possibly have. He builds both gas and charcoal and wood cookers. He has a lot of different um, ideas that he has together. 
He has verticals. He has horizontals. He has all wood. He has all gas. Um, I've cooked on his hog cookers before. Uh, in fact, we used one of his hog cookers, and I'll continue to use one of his hog cookers at Carolina Pitmasters when we grill. Um, the big one that uh, had the basket on the sides, Bill, that we cooked the hog on, was I believe in the class that you went to. Was was an Alpharon cooker? Yeah, he showed he showed me. He did a little grill tour at BarbecueTricks.com of one of his things. And right. The thing that I like is that. For like the gas grill that you're showing, right. there's a cool little panel along the bottom where you could just put That's right. wood chips, which is a nice little touch that sure. a lot of grills don't have, but everything seemed pretty heavy duty. Yeah, and the, the thing that I like about John is the service is great. Um, he you know, takes care of his grills, um, and he is local. Um, John does pretty much all the welding that I do on my cookers. He fixes all mine and you know trims them up basically. Uh, if I have a you know well popper and need something done real quick, I take the cooker over to John. So he, he fixes me right up. Uh, but he is he is an, an awesome. He's an engineer by by education. Uh, he understands how grill should be. He's always trying something new. Uh, it's wonderful to go out to the shop and spend an afternoon with John, talk about barbecue, we need to do talk that. about cookers. Yeah, it's a we'll great take place a camera. to be. Absolutely. Um, certainly, one of the things that I look for whenever you buy a grill, and this is just a this is just a good solid grilling tip. When you're looking to buy a grill, make sure that a your welder or your fabricator is a solid individual in your community that he's there all the time, that he's willing to you know be part of what you do because quite frankly things break in a grill while they're driving down the road or you know something will pop a leaf spring might pop or you know something might a hinge or something along those lines or you want to add something to it um, so I always advocate making sure that you know if you're gonna if, if you're gonna live in South Carolina it may be a good idea to have a man in South Carolina that can do your service work for you so certainly uh, you know Harry get a hold of John Haney uh, if you need his number where is he what part John is in uh, John is in Somerville he lives out in the uh, on the other side of Somerville in a little place actually called Lebanon, which is out towards the Wasmesaw community out there. So not just in, in South Carolina, but across different states, are are most of the competition cookers that are out there using different stuff? I mean, I know I, you have like a Superior, right? I do. I have a Superior. That's a big manufacturer. It is. I have I have a Superior smoker. I have an Oklahoma Joe. Um, I have a Carter's cooker. I mean, I have, you know me, I have a lot of different kind of cookers. And... Um, but even Carter's cooker is kind of a... He's, he's a local person. He takes care. He's out of Lexington, South Carolina right now, around Columbia. And, but, you know, um, most of the guys who, who buy cookers buy cookers for specific reasons. All of my cookers have specific reasons why I have that style of cooker, why I have that particular brand or what it's all about. And, um, you know, it's, it, it kind of gets to be whatever you get comfortable with. Some people don't like offset cooking. They don't. They don't understand what offset cooking is all about. It's difficult for them, so they choose to go to a cabinet style cooker. The cabinet style cookers offer you a little bit less of a of a tending value, if you want to call it that. You don't have to watch them quite so much. You don't have to play with them quite so much. It's more or less set it and forget it. Where if you're going to do a hog, um, you know, hogs take a big grilling space, and in my opinion, you should a hog should be um, cooked f direct from the bottom up. And, you know, it's not really, in my opinion, and it's strictly my opinion, an offset cooker doesn't really cook a hog well because you have to find a way to turn that thing around within the tube, and there's just a whole lot of things that go along with it. So I prefer a standard 36 by 48 or 48 by 50 or whatever it is that, you're, that you're, as your grill size needs to be to do what you want to do, and I prefer fire being up from the bottom. So that's why I have a lot of different cookers doing a lot of different things. Um, you know, for a standard KCBS contest, I like my Oklahoma Joe and I like my Superior Smoker. For, you know, cooking a hog, I like to have that 36 by 48 box. Um, Mike has got a beautiful one. It's made by a local fellow here. But John makes a makes a wonderful cooker, too. You know, that cooks hogs. A lot of choices. A lot of choices. You know, the best thing to do is, a, a, figure out what you want to do with your cooker. That's number one. Figure out what you want to cook. Certainly, I have, I have a, a big gym custom cooker um, it's called a lazy Q that I did Jim asked me if I wanted to have the doors open all the way across the tube so that I could you know build put bigger things in but that's not why I bought that cooker I bought that cooker because I wanted to cater on it catering is generally chicken and hamburgers and and uh, you know Boston butts and that kind of thing so I knew I'd ha I'd, I wanted to do smaller cuts in it so I didn't need that big long grill to be able to put all that big stuff in I wanted I wanted four smaller areas to cook on so when we had that had that cooker built we had that in mind you know so the racks come out they're easy for one man to handle rather than having a big long space so 
Figure out what it is you want to do with your cooker. Figure out what it is that, you know, that'll satisfy you. And then the big then is buy bigger than you think you need because that's going to happen to you one way or another. All right. There Spend you go. the extra thousand. Harry, there you go. There's a lot of ingre- information there. Yeah, that's a ton right just there. Just remember John Haney. John Haney. He's on Facebook. Alvaron Cookers. If you need his number, hit me at jack at greattv.com. I'll be glad to pass it along. Our gadget this week, actually, we've got a, a bunch of gadgets because it's probably <laughs> the most used thing. Tony's, uh, Tony's cracking me up over there. I, He's photo shoot? No, he's he's bending down trying to get out of the shadow. And oh. <laughs> the shadow's long anyway because we're it's getting late in the day here. <laughs> We've got uh, tongs as, oh, our, no. as our gadget Here's this week. There's a secret ingredient. And uh, there are a lot of different kinds of tongs. There people have are. different views of it. Oh, this is interesting. And NBBQ. A. Plastic tongs. Plastic tongs. You got these which come with every uh, kind of cheap kind of barbecue kit. That's right. Which That's are, exactly where that they're big, from. but... I never use these. They, yeah, that's I call them carpal tunnel tongs because yeah. they're so hard to keep I don't, going. They, you know, they come with some of the big kits and gift kits. Yeah, but. it seems like whenever you get those gift kits, they always bring you these huge tools because I think they think that you know it's like, you know, you got to have these huge things to barbecue with. It's these really work. True. Good old fashioned uh, pinchers. Tongs, yeah. um, but the ones you end up seeing the most are these, and this is actually one that I don't have, and I've heard talk about. This is, I don't, is there a name for this? Don't know. Kind? I, I don't see a brand name. I call but, them tongs. But the one thing you may want to look for, which I really like this feature, and I've seen people like a lot, is this little button here at the, right. at the end. And uh, basically you pull it out. You can keep it in the drawer or uh, in the dishwasher. And you need it, you pop it in, and then you can, you know, pinch. Yeah, um, you know, when you if you cook for a living, you understand tongs. Um, tongs are kind of like your hands. They become extensions of you. Um, and, you know, you see the good saute cooks work and so on and so forth. Um, shorter tongs are made for, you know, taking things, uh, you know, in a saute pan maybe or taking things off of a sheet pan or whatever. I prefer longer tongs when I'm working over a grill because when you're flipping things on a grill, um, say you've got chicken or you're working with hamburgers or something, you need a little bit longer tong, you get in there and you flip it, and the, the, more than likely the grease will you know, hit down on your, on your fuel source and create a kind of a flash. And if, and if you have these short tongs and you're doing that, well, you're taking a chance at burning your hand. So I like to use the longer tongs for that kind of and thing. And like, these Shorter are really, thing. these are super, super cheap. Yeah, cheap. But Good stuff to one, have, though. Yeah, these, uh, I really don't have any complaint about using these. These Heck are, no. but uh, I actually prefer... This is nice you can get it because yep. it's easy to use, and this sometimes will fall down and kind of be a bit of a pain. So. Believe it or not, when I'm actually when I'm in the stores choosing tongs, I actually take into consideration this spring right here. Um, and if that spring is is hard for me to be able to, to cramp down, I do suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome, and sometimes it gets hard for me when I'm using tongs all the time. That will make me hurt after a while so i like to have tongs the this spring action here is kind of nice it doesn't take a whole lot of force to make it move as that one does right there but if, so if i were to review i like this yes i Good don't thing. don't dig those yeah because you know well, those yeah, are okay that that probably came with a spatula and a fork and uh mm-hmm. you know like i Big said it came with some it. kind of a rolled up you know ball of canvas people like them as a it. gift oh hell yeah man they you know they look great hanging on there. You know, big tongs, big tongs. I don't know. All right. These were probably come off of a salad bar or something. Everybody can use some good tongs. Yeah. Pick them up. Our secret Different ingredient this week, I'm, I was trying to, we went to uh, Hilton Head, and I was doing some grocery shopping, and I saw Hershey's syrup. That might be a good secret ingredient. Now, I have to admit, I have not used it for a sauce, but... Sir, have you ever used anything like that? I, I use chocolate regularly. Um, I don't. I have never used Hershey syrup regularly. But you know, as I think about it, I think it might be a nice little thing to look into. Um, certainly, it would be a sweetener, and it would be something that would bring um, that coffee kind of chocolate kind of bitter to whatever it is that you use. Um, I would think that maybe something along the lines of a, a nice mole might be something to use with that, or or you know. Um, if you want to use a barbecue sauce, I would think it would be good with beef. Uh, make a nice sauce and then kind of add a little bit of chocolate to it to bring the sweetener up and make it all happen. Um, certainly, uh, I think it's a great idea, Bill, and it's something I'm going to look into. And while you're cooking, hey, you know, get yourself out a glass of milk and uh, you know, 
Make yourself. Just put some in this beer right <laughs> here. I'll try that. Uh, you and know, the other ingredient good. I was talking about, thinking about, was uh, like a Dr. Pepper or a cheer wine. So I wore my cheer wine hat today, and our uh, great plate photo is this cheer wine cooker. I thought. Have you seen this cheer wine cooker? I have that seen. As looks a, like the machine. As a matter of fact, we were out at the uh, um, Bilo in Monk's Corner uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the cheer wine crew was out there cooking ribs. They were doing a charity uh, gig out there in front of the Bilo. We were doing the Garland Jack's uh, Secret Six Sauce demo out there. I like cheer wine. And the cheer wine guys were out there, and they had that cooker out there to look like a machine and we had a blast with those guys uh, we helped them sell as many racks of ribs as they, they could had sell. a huge team out at daniel Island. yeah they did and you know um that team right there is just they're a fun group to be around and uh they were looking for they were looking to uh um i guess the bilo organization does a thing once a week or something along those lines where they do uh, ribs for charity and they were selling racks of ribs and giving the money to, cool. to charity. That was cool. I just thought this was a cool smoker. It looks cool. like a cheer wine soda machine, it does. but it uh, smokes me. And they were having a great time with it, and they were all standing out front. And, of course, we uh, you know, partook in the cheer wine with it. Good stuff. Sun is setting. I'm just about done with this, so uh, time to wrap it up. We will be back next week. Time to wrap it up, gang. Hey, make sure you get on and subscribe. We need you to subscribe. We need you to tell everybody you know subscribe about Subscribe sounds uh, expensive. It does. We need you it to is free. like. Um, do like, and share. like, share, um, get on uh, Facebook. I think we are at 766 last time I looked. Still shooting for a thousand friends. And by golly, we are going to have the prize package of all prize packages. We're still going to come up with thousandth that. person. We don't, have, we don't know what it is yet. But I assure you, with all the context I have in barbecue, it's going to be nice. I mean, it's going to be nice. And I think maybe, you know, Tony hasn't actually, you know, liked the Facebook page. And he may be waiting for nine ninety nine. But I'm going to say... On great TV right now, Tony, you can't do that. Um, we're going to exclude... This Tony? This Tony. Oh. We're going to make Tony not be able to get the thousands because, you know, Tony's a barbecue nut. He loves to have that uh, those barbecue prize packages. He gets them all the time. He's the one that brings them to us. Like so, us. That's all. That's right. Send us a great plate. Uh, and uh, listen, in the world today, um, as crazy as it is out there, gang, remember, uh, you know, buy local, think global. Stay sustainable and every chance you get, for God's sakes, hug your mama.